All right, hello. So we're going to pick up where we left off in part two of our discussion of partial molar properties here in part three. So where we left off last um, screencast is we worked out an expression for the differential of f total with independent variables tp uh, and the moles of each species in, in my system. And so what we want to do next is we want to massage this equation a little more. Okay, And what I'm going to do is in particular, I'm going to start by playing around with this term and this term, my partial molar term. Okay, and so how I'm going to play around with them is one. Okay, so one, thinking about the first term, is f total is equal to n times f. So then the differential of f total is equivalent to the differential of n times f. Okay, now product rule would be u v prime, u v prime plus v u prime, okay, f dn, <coughs> okay? Then, okay, next I'm going to mess with the second term. So the second term is sum over i, f bar i, dn i. Okay, so how I'm going to mess with that is first it's going to be n i, okay? So I'm going to take ni, okay, and I know that ni, okay, well, I'm going to say that, what I meant to say is ni is equal to xi n, okay, but what's probably more clear to you is xi, my definition of the mole fraction of component i, is equal to ni divided by n, or n's the total number of moles, okay, but if I stick with this, ni is equal to xi n, so the differential of ni, okay, would be equivalent to the differential of xi times n, okay, which will be u v prime, so xi dn, plus v u prime, so n dxi. So that last term then, sum over i, f bar i dn i, I could equivalently write as sum over i, f bar i, okay, then for dn i, I can write that as xi dn plus n dxi, okay, or equivalently then, breaking it up, this would be uh, sum over i, uh, let's write it as uh, xi f bar i dn uh, plus <coughs> sum over i n times f bar i dxi, and then in my last iteration, it doesn't really matter how I do it, but just to point it out, you know, um, here, well, here, dn, right, it, it's just dn, right, n's the total number of moles in my system, um, so dn, right, this term, so if I think in terms of a binary system, okay, so sum over i would be uh, I'd have to write down an equivalent expression for component 1 and component 2, right? I would be 1 in one case, I would be 2 in another. In both of those terms, right, dn is just dn, right? Same thing here, right, n is just n, okay? So, equivalently, I could write this as dn, the differential number, the differential of n, the differential in the um, total number of moles in my system, the extent of my system, times sum over i xi f bar i, okay, then this term I could write as plus n sum over i f bar i dxi, okay. So now if I plug this back in to this equation up here, okay, df total, okay, becomes, so now let's say plug in so df total becomes uh, n df plus f dn is equal to, then the first term was n times partial f, partial t, a constant um, <coughs> pressure and composition, dt plus n times partial f, partial p, a constant t and x, dp, and then that last sum term I can replace as plus dn sum over i xi f bar i 
plus n sum over i f bar i dx i. Okay? And so basically what I've done you know, here is I've replaced that differential of the moles of each species with an equivalent expression just for the differential of the total number of moles of my system, the extent of my system, and then this is the change in composition, right, or variation in my composition. Okay, cool. So now with this expression, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to collect terms. Okay, so we're going to collect terms in n and dn. Okay, where n is the total number of moles in my system, n is essentially the fluctuation or variance in the number of total moles in my, my system, right? Change in the extent of my system, the size of my system. And so if I do that, so if I start with n, okay, and so let's bring all the terms over to the left-hand side, okay? So collecting terms in n, so I have n times, so df, okay, minus, so I bring this over to the left, this would be partial f partial t, a constant p and x, dt minus partial f partial p a constant t and x dp and then this end term so then that would be a minus sum over i f bar i dxi okay now dn uh, so dn okay plus, okay, I'm going to write it down here, okay, okay, collecting terms in dn, okay, so dn, so here I have f, and then on the right hand side I would just have this term, yeah, so dn, so f, and then minus sum over i, xi, f bar i, okay, and that all has to be equal to zero. Okay, and so what we're going to do next, what we're going to say next, is so if I look at this expression having collected terms, okay, n is the total number of moles in my system. It's the extent of my system. dn is the differential of n. Okay, so this is um, the fluctuation in n or the variation in n in my system. Okay, so the key principle or what we're going to take advantage of next or leverage next is n and dn are independent of each other, right? n and dn are independent. n is the total number of moles of my system. dn is the variation in n. Okay? n's the total number of moles of my system, the total n. dn is the variation in n. So n and dn are independent. So if the sum of these two expressions has to equal 0, it must be that each of these terms in brackets are equal to 0. Okay. So again, we have n times term in brackets 1, dn times term in brackets 2. n is the total number of moles in my system, dn is the variation in n. Okay n and dn are independent of each other. So in order for this expression to be true, right, where I have n times term in brackets plus dn times terms in brackets is equal to zero, in order for this expression to be true, it must be that each term in brackets is equal to zero. Okay? So it must be then the df okay, minus partial f partial t, a constant p and x dt minus partial f partial p, a constant t and x dp minus sum over i, f bar i dxi is equal to zero. Or rearranging, okay, so let me just label this as term one because I'm just going to take one on at a time. Okay, so it must be then, or if I rearrange, it must be then that df is equal to partial f, partial t, a constant p and x dt, plus 
partial f, partial p, a constant t and x dp, plus sum over i, f bar i, dxi. All right, so now I have an expression for the differential of f, my molar f, uh, with essentially independent variables uh, tp uh, and xi. Okay, cool. Okay, so now I have an expression for the differential of f. Um, so now, if composition's constant. Well, you know, these first two terms are at constant composition. Here's my closed system terms. Here's my open system term. So if the composition of my system is constant, what happens to my expression? Well, if I'm at constant composition, okay, then dxi is just equal to zero, and that term goes away. So at constant composition, okay, what that means is, is that dxi is equal to zero, right? The moles are constant, right? The change in the moles of each species or composition of each species is constant, it's zero, okay? Or the composition of each species is constant, so the change in uh, the composition of each species would, would just be zero. And so I'd be left with df is equal to partial f, partial t, a constant p, and we can write x, right, dt, okay? And I guess, in fact, we should write x because f is going to be a function of temperature, pressure, and, and composition. We're just looking at the specific case now of a fixed composition. Composition is not changing. Okay. Df, dp, a constant t and x, uh, dp. So a constant composition, we recover our expressions from chapter 5. Cool. So a constant composition, we recover our expressions from chapter 5 which makes sense, and they should, because those first two terms are just our closed system terms. Those are our terms at constant composition, okay? Uh, but here, though, we have an expression for f, my molar f, with independent variables tp uh, and xi, okay? That's cool, okay, great. Then the other thing we'll look at is now term two, okay? So uh, term two, and I'm gonna have to look back up just to see what we have. So term two is this guy. So dn times f minus sum over i, xi, f bar i is equal to zero. Or, so it must be that you know, this term in brackets is equal to zero. Okay? So it must be then that I have f minus sum over i, xi, f bar i is equal to zero. So it must be then that f is equal to sum over i, xi, F bar i. Okay. So if I want to think about actual quantities, okay, so if let F be, say, my molar volume, okay, molar volume is typically something we can readily uh, understand. This would tell me that V, okay, would be equal to sum over i, xi, V bar i. Okay. Now, if I want to take this even further, all right, think about, say, a binary system, okay. So it would tell me that V is equal to X1, V1, V bar 1, plus X2, V bar 2, okay? So V is the molar volume of my mixture, right? So, you know, V is going to be a function of temperature, pressure, and the composition of my system, okay? So V is the molar volume of my mixture. Well, the molar volume of my mixture is the molar average, Okay, molar average of the partial molar property, partial molar volume of component one and component two, where my partial molar property is essentially the effective volume occupied by each species in that mixture, right? And that should make sense. So my molar volume is nothing more than the molar average of the effective molar volume of each species in my system. Cool, all right, right on, okay? so. F is equal to sum over I, Xi, F bar I, right? And it's something that should make sense, right? That makes sense that F should be the molar average of the effective F of each component in my system. Uh, and essentially, you just proved it. Cool. Okay. Um, and if I wanted to take this and look at, say, the extensive version, okay? Well, if I want to multiply by N, um, I could. Okay, again, it's just n, so in the summation, I'd have the n, same n for each term. So I multiply both sides by n, right? I have n, f is equal to n times sum over i, 
xi f bar i, it'd be the same n uh, for each term, so this would be equivalent to sum over i n times xi f bar i, which would be sum over i n i f bar i, and n times f, of course, is just f total, right? So f total would be sum over i n i f bar i. So if this is the effective uh, f of component i in my mixture, well then the total f is just you know, the total contribution due to each species. Cool, okay, great, 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 great. All right, then the only other thing that I want to mention about partial molar properties before we move on, okay, uh, and when we move on, we'll talk about uh, uh, gibbs duhem equation next, is that uh, one thing I want to point out, in case I didn't, is um, all of our equations from Chapter 5 are applicable to partial molar properties. Okay. And what I mean by that is uh, take, for example, G. Okay. So our fundamental equation for G was for um, DG is equal to negative SDT plus VDP. All right. So I could equivalently write that my partial molar G, which is my chemical potential of species I, is equal to negative S bar I uh, DT plus V bar I DP. All right. And where that would come from is well, um, g bar i is equal to uh, the differential of um, g total, okay, or d and g, um, uh, with respect to n i, a constant t, p, uh, and n j, right? Moles of all other uh, species uh, held constant, all right? And so. You know, you could even just think, I don't know, G is each, well, I guess this is, you know, you could show this, right? G is also equal to H minus TS, right? Or equivalently, G bar I is equal to H bar I minus TS bar I. And so where that comes from would be, say, even just in this case, right? This is NG, right? I could plug just G in here, right? And then it's you know, the differential of the difference in two quantities, right? And I recover um, said expression, okay? Um, you can work out expressions for partial molar quantities, right? So, you know, you would say stuff like, you know, G residual, okay? The book uses a superscript R, right? G residual is equal to H residual minus T S residual. Well, what do you know, partial molar G of component I of residual is equal to partial molar HI residual minus T S bar I residual. Okay, and so um, all I want to say is all our equations from chapter five, everything that we've seen uh, so far uh, before, is also applicable to partial molar properties.